Hello, thank you for joining. We will begin our program shortly. Today's program is brought to us by the National Science Foundation. In the chat, you will find a link to a research survey on STEM careers. Please participate in this important research and complete the survey. Hello, thank you for joining. We will begin our program shortly. Today's aquaculture panel is brought to us by the National Science Foundation. In the chat, you'll find a link to a research survey on STEM careers. Please participate in this important research and complete the survey. Our program will begin shortly. Hello, thank you for joining. We will begin our program shortly. We are just letting in more people to the webinar. So please be patient and we will start in a minute. Good afternoon, I'm Rabina Taliaferro, Director of Community Engagement for the Billion Oyster Project. Welcome to the fifth episode of the Billion Oyster Project Near Peer Career Panel Series, brought to us today by the National Science Foundation in partnership with Pace University and the New York Harbor School. These panels focus on introducing middle school students to our current high school students, college students, alum, and industry professionals in the aquaculture program. At the end of the program, you will have the opportunity to participate in some important research with the National Science Foundation. During the panel, there will be a link in the chat box and that will take you to the National Science Foundation research survey on STEM careers. We would love to have your input. Now, without further ado, I would like to introduce our Billion Oyster Project moderator, Avery Benz, who's currently a senior in New York Harbor School studying vessel operations. Avery. 
Welcome all and thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to join us today. My name is Avery Benz and I'm a senior in the Vessel Operations Program of New York Harbor School. Today we're going to be meeting with panelists that undergo a career in aquaculture as well as some Harbor School students and alumni. Throughout this meeting, we'll be discussing the different pathways that our panelists took to get to where they are today, along with exploring the difficulties and successes of this field. We hope that this discussion will help you understand the things that you might want to know about this maritime branch. Without further ado, the names of our special guests are Harbor, Stu Harbor School students, Renee Mungle and Jason Chow, Chow, yes. Uh, uh, Harbor School alumni, Illusion Rivera and Antoine Meyer and professionals, Yemi Amu, founder of the director of Oko Urban Farms, Marta gomez Shiari, University of Rhode Island Aquaculture and Fisheries Advisor and Roy Arezzo, New York Harbor School Aquaculture teacher. I'm going to ask the panelists that when I call your names, you turn on your cameras and mics to give, an, to give the audience a brief two minute background about yourself and how you ended up in the line of work. When you are done speaking, please turn your mics and cameras back off and wait for the discussion section of our meeting. Renee, will you start off for us, please? Um, hi everyone, my name is Renee Mungle. I'm a senior in the aquaculture CTE and um, a little bit of background about me. I found my love for aquaculture in my freshman year. I volunteered with the after school club they had. And ever since then, I've been in love with aquaculture. And that's just a little brief background about me. Thank you for sharing. Uh, Jason, may you go next? Um, I'm Jason. Uh, I'm also an aquaculture senior. Um, how I got into aquaculture was um, it showed some interest to me for that. Uh, it was a science class that was uh, hands on, and we were able to uh, have fun, well, not have fun learning uh, about farming fish and oysters. Thank you. Um, Illusion, may you please go next? Hi, everyone. My name is Illusion, and I graduated um, Harbor School in 2018. Um, I was also in the aquaculture program, and I got interested in marine biology in like sixth grade. And when I found Harbor School, I knew it was my best choice, and I got in. So I'm here now, and I am a Stony Brook student. Stony Brook University student, and I am one year away from my bachelor's degree. Thank you. Antoine? Hi, everyone. My name is Antoine. Um, I graduated Harbor School in 2020 from the aquaculture program, and now I go to the University of New England, and I study marine biology with a minor in aquaculture. Um, Yemi. Good morning, everyone. My name is Yemi Amu, and I am an urban farmer in New York City. I run an aquaponics farm where we raise fish and vegetables together. And um, I didn't study aquaculture. Actually, it was something that I fell into um, by accident, but I love being part of creating an aquaculture industry in New York City. Marta. Good morning, everybody. Um, I have a long career in aquaculture, too many years to mention here, um, but it all started when I was a kid um, in Spain. Um, I, I grew up in a, in a town in Spain in the Northwest in the Atlantic coast that depends on the ocean for jobs and for their whole life, livelihood. So, um, and when I was a kid, um, there was a change in the fisheries. Um, so a lot of the boats couldn't go fishing and there was a lot of loss of jobs. And I got really, um, you know, I got inspired by that um, to go into a career 
that will help sustain um, seafood production in any way possible, either by helping fisheries or through aquaculture production. Um, and it took a while to get there. Um, I really didn't go, there were no marine programs where I grew up at that point. There's plenty now, but at that point, what I did is I did a um, bachelor's in chemistry and biochemistry. Um, and then I continued to a PhD working on human diseases. You wonder, that was a little detour there. But after I graduated from my PhD, I came to the United States to do a postdoctoral fellowship working on research on aquaculture. And um, then I got a professor position at the University of Rhode Island in 1997. And since then I've been living in the East Coast of the United States working on oysters and clams and flounders and starfish and any other marine organism. Um, that um, there is some disease happening. I am a fish pathologist, so I work on diseases of fish, and that's me. And last but not least, Roy. Hi, everybody. Great to see familiar faces. My name is Roy Arezzo, and I am one of the founding science teachers of New York Harbor School and taught uh, several different courses uh, at the school. But my work with community gardens uh, throughout New York City and composting and greening projects combined with my summer research experiences in marine biology and fisheries, uh, I guess made me lucky enough to be a candidate to take over the aquaculture program uh, from the founding teachers of that program. And so I teach aquaculture and everybody on this panel has contributed greatly to the program. Uh, so i um, lucky to be part of this BOP event and uh, really excited to move forward with all the panelists um, and stay in touch and make the program as great as possible. Thank you. Thank you all for your introductions. Now we will begin the discussion. Will all of the panelists please turn on their cameras to begin? I'm going to ask questions either directed to all of you, specifically to professionals or specifically to students or alumni. If you want to answer, you may simply unmute your mic and speak. Please respect one another and await your turn if you want to answer to the same questions. And to the audience, if you have any questions, you can write them down in the Q&A section of your screen and we'll get to them as soon as we can after our discussion. For the first question, this is directed to all of you. Can someone define aquaculture for our audience, please? So I will start since I'm supposed to be the aquaculture teacher, I should know the answer. Uh, but the aquaculture is simply the farming of aquatic organisms. And as you can see from the diverse uh, population of panelists here uh, that can take many shapes and have many purposes, including the work of the Billion Oyster Project, which uses it for restoration. Would anyone else like to add on? That was such a great definition. <laughs> yeah, we can give examples. I mean, uh, we've worked on seaweeds, uh, We've worked on phytoplankton. We've worked on oyster, um, sea stars for aquarium and, you know, for um, public aquariums and education. So aquaculture can be seen in many different places and in many different levels from a small aquarium tank in your, in your house to huge facilities, industrial facilities that grow tons of fish. Um, and I'll just add to that, that um, it's just, basically farming in water and it can be literally any organism that can grow in water. I'm a vegetable farm. I grow all my vegetables in water along with fish and I would call that aquaculture as well. Thank you. Um, for our next question, also directed to all of you, what attracted you to this field of study? Okay, so I can answer this. Um, so as a child, I always went fishing and I always loved um, just being outdoors. So 
as I started growing older and actually learning more about science and sustainability, it became um, something that I wanted to continue learning about and studying. And I am currently studying um, coastal environmental studies in Stony Brook and hope to one day um, do some urban planning for greener space and sustainability in cities. Would anybody else like to share their answer? Yeah, I'll go. Um, I saw how hands-on it was because I originally wanted to go into marine biology, but and I am in marine biology now, but while in high school, I saw how hands-on it was and I really liked the aspect that I was able to like work with fish and work with aquatic plants and like just truly do like, I mean, it really felt like I was keeping like a fish tank as, as like pets and whatnot. So I really enjoyed that aspect. And I'm also learning about how to like truly take care of like fish and now like to like sell them because in the aquaculture program, we did three different things. We learned how to like take care of fish as like pets somewhat. And we also like learned how to do restoration with oysters. And we also um, learned a little bit about tilapia and selling them and getting them to market size. So that was really interesting to me. I think I can share a little bit more of um, how I got into aquaculture. Besides the fact that I love seafood, I love food but I love seafood um, and it was part of the culture in my region. Um, um, my parents gave me sea monkeys when I was a kid and I love looking at them in the microscope. So I started being fascinated by science. So I think I combined my love for science with my love for seafood and you know, aquaculture was a great choice for that. It combines all those things. And like Antoine says, you are out there, you can do hands-on, you can be in the water, you can combine a lot of other things like Illusion says, the, the love for fishing and being in the ocean. So that's how I got there. Thank you for your responses. Whoa, was someone else like that on? I'm sorry. Just gonna add to that, that I actually fell in love with aquaculture because I was just fascinated with the idea of raising fish in an urban environment. Um, it's not something that you find, you know, it, under normal circumstances. You could see people growing things in the ground, but aquaculture farms don't really exist like that in, in um, New York City. And aquaculture farms that also raise fish to feed people um, is not common. So I was just fascinated with what it means to, to bring that and make that possible for as many people as possible in the city. And just to add one more thing to that, I was also very inspired by like the Billion Oyster Project and the fact that we can grow oysters and install them into different waterways like around the city and basically watch them grow and also restore the population while um, improving water quality is just very fascinating. Thank you for all those wonderful responses. Um, for our next question, this is for our professionals only. What education do you need to be able to do what you do professionally? I guess I can get started on that. Um, I'm a professor at the university, and which means that I'm teaching students about aquaculture and science. Um, I'm also a pathologist because I work on diseases. And, and for me, the training that I required was having a PhD. Um, and I always knew that I wanted to do that. So I went directly for that. But I've had plenty of students that um, started just with hands-on projects and, and, and through high school and maybe started with a bachelor's or an associate's. Um, there is many different jobs in aquaculture that require different levels of, of expertise. Um, and uh, for me, I wanted to do science. I wanted to do the research. I wanted to work on finding new solutions. And I also wanted to um, educate people on how to do research. So it was um, getting to the, through the PhD and then the postdoctoral training. I have a follow-up question actually asked by somebody in the audience. Um, what kind of job pass can you get from studying aquaculture? Where are you in the industrial ladder? Um, 
So I'm on the education component, um, but at the higher education component, um, and I act as consultant for the industry uh, too, because I have expertise on diseases. Is that answer the question? I'm not sure I know exactly how to answer. If you can give me a little more guidance, maybe I can help with that. Um, probably just explain like job opportunities that you can get while studying this field. Mm, there is, um, and I think that, um, um, so we have graduates from the aquaculture program at our university go to from working at a farm and a 16 farm to developing their own farm. Uh, we have people going into education like Roy uh, and um, at different levels. Uh, we have people going into conservation, um, like the Villian Oyster Project is restoration of the marine environment. So uh, conservation, restoration, people who work for aquariums. Some people are working maintaining fish at hospitals that do research with fish, um, but they are just maintaining the fish. Um, some people go into uh, working for supermarkets, providing seafood and knowing about how the most sustainable seafood can get there. Um, some people work in restaurants. I have some uh, students that ended up be having combining aquaculture with restaurants um, and, and um, have big businesses um, um, with selling fish and also creating new, you know, um, new recipes. Um, those are just some examples, but there's everything from hands-on jobs to highly technical jobs developing uh, systems, for instance, for uh, growing an, uh, animals and plants. Um, and maybe I think Yemi could do, could give also more uh, more of an idea of other jobs. There's also community jobs, I think. I think your your list is um, pretty thorough. <laughs> um, yeah, farming, uh, farming on land, farming the ocean. You can be a farmer that works at restaurants. Um, you could also combine. Uh, maybe agritourism, you talked about working in an aquarium, you can also set up a space that people can come visit. Um, research, even studying um, fish behavior is another one. Um, I'm working with some students from NYU on that and that's very fascinating um, to me. What else are we uh, leaving out? Oh, maybe fish food and fish diet, um, fish nutrition, that's also, something that um, you can go into. I'm really fascinated with that and all the different types of food and understanding nutrition and health of fish. Uh, that's all I can think about. Yeah, I, I think there is also management, people that work for like the Department of Environmental Protection of Environmental Management, helping manage species um, or like uh, hatchery managers that, um, raise fish or, or, or the billion oyster project raise, raise a species to be deployed out there. So um, yeah, that's a, there's a lot of different types of jobs and all depends on the skills and, 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 what, and your skills and what you are passionate about, I guess. Thank you. Um, moving on to the next question for only the alumni. What are you studying in college currently? And are you looking for a career related to aquaculture? So yeah, I kind of answered this. Um, I probably like jumped to it, but I'm currently at Stony Brook and I'm majoring in coastal environmental studies and minoring in human impacts. And I hope to find a career in environmental science, um, but mainly focus on urban planning or environmental projects in urban areas for sustainability. Hi, um, so I go to the University of New England in Biddeford, Maine. I study marine biology with a concentration in biology and I also have a minor in aquaculture. And I am looking a career for a career look, um, in aquaculture because I want to be a hatchery manager for either a big aquaculture company or a restoration group. This question is for all the panelists. Um, what are some ways 
from this field of art? what are some ways people from this field are making a difference in the world? And for a follow up question, I would like especially the students to answer this. How are you personally making an impact from this field? Can you uh, repeat the first part of the question, please? Yes. Um, what are some ways people from this field are making a difference in the world? I have one great example. example. Um, I don't know if you uh, have heard of the Peace Corps or the AmeriCorps. Um, so we have many aquaculture students that have traveled as part of the Peace Corps to Africa and or Southeast Asia um, to help um, um, farmers in the region to learn about how to raise fish or change or some new technologies or to help them develop um, businesses that relate to aquaculture. So um, the Peace Corps um, is, is one example of impacting, um, impacting other cultures or by helping with educating and securing their ability to produce food for themselves. Um, so that's just one example. Um. Just to be closer to home here, um, just feeding people. There's a lot of food secure insecurity in New York City, um, and there are food pantries and churches and schools and local organizations that are interested in providing fresh food for their communities and um, being also able to provide a um, healthy source of protein is very valuable. So just being able to feed people and to be able to address food security is one way um, that people are currently making an impact in New York City. Um, thank you. Sorry. It's okay. Um, so for the second half of the question, how I um, personally am trying to make an impact I have decided to pursue a career in environmental journalism, and I'll be using my knowledge of aquaculture and environmental science to help highlight the industry. So that's my future long-term contribution. That's amazing. Thank you for sharing that. Um, would anybody else like to add on? OK, continue. Yeah, sure. Oh, oh sorry. No. Um, I believe that like as students, um, from the New York Harbor School. Well, I'm an alumni, but as students, I talk for like us in general, I guess. Um, we have contributed to farming and um, raising oysters, which is which takes a lot of hands and a lot of community outreach and informing the public is also a huge um, part of how we can make um, this like just project this message of environmentalism and um, um, eco-friendly gestures to like the community and also have other people learn and get involved. Um, I'm gonna jump in. Uh, most of the students are a little humble, but all the students have worked and got paid uh, at some point in their aquaculture career through New York Harbor School CT program. Uh, and worked with the community. Um, Renee and Jason mentioned earlier, or it's in their bios, that they were interns with the Billion Oyster Project and Illusion. Um, I, I'm forgetting your internship for the moment, but you then worked for the Billion Oyster Project, if I'm not mistaken, after you graduated. Is that correct? Yeah. So I had a couple of internships. Um, I believe my first internship was with the Nature Conservancy, actually, through New York Harbor. Mm -hmm. And then I did the river project. Yeah. And then I continued. Um, I actually did the Billy Noyster project. I mean, Billy Noyster project internship last summer as well. And Antoine, you also uh, did some internships and worked in the hatchery with, alongside Rebecca of the Billy Noyster project. 
I want to add to that. Um, so my own research is about trying to figure out ways to manage diseases that kill aquatic organisms. Um, so there is a bunch of diseases of oysters that are impacting those wild populations. And that's why projects like the Billion Oyster Project exist, um, is to try to um, restore those populations. And my work wouldn't be possible without those interns and those hatcheries and and the students that do all the hands-on work. I, you know, I just direct, I have ideas and, and I learn from the students from when they do the work, the hands-on work and from the hatchery managers. Um, so it's kind of a teamwork to figure out ways to prevent and to avoid those diseases and manage them so we can have a sustainable source of seafood. I actually have a pretty good example of how um aquaculture is being used to like help fish. So we have in Maine an endangered fish and it's called the redfin pickerel. And essentially this aquaculture program in my school helps grow the fish up into like a size where they can put them, release them back into the wild to help um, grow the population again. Thank you. Um, for our next question, this is also directed to all of you. How can we advance this field and take steps to be to making this field more diverse? Um, I'll speak up for this. Um, what I believe is that uh, aquaculture, uh, when you do aquaculture, it just also comes with a lot of waste. And I believe that there are ways to more sustainably uh, do aquaculture, like um, producing fish food, uh, well, not producing fish food, uh, uh, to feed fish, you need fish food. And most fish food that uh, most people take are from wildlife. So you take it from the ocean or something like that. And I believe we are able to produce that uh, in the lab to feed uh, our own uh, organisms that we farm, or, and also, uh, Aquaculture also uh, and comes with like a lot of waste where water is being either dumped in the estuary or water. And I believe that uh, you could definitely uh, solve this problem by doing aquaponics like Yemi is doing. And I just think that uh, we should have a, like a way to not cut, uh, produce a lot of waste along with um, with doing aquaculture, yeah. I would like to answer for the school. I know this question came up at our professional advisory committee. And I think it's my opinion that the CT programs uh, shouldn't be recruiting students necessarily. Uh, but we as a community should make sure our school is and stays diverse and attracts students from all over the city and creates opportunities equally, uh, especially in for communities in New York City that don't have access to a good high school to do science or marine related fields. So I think as a community and a school, we should strive for diversity and our programs should be open to all our students. I have a follow-up question asked by somebody in the audience. Do you work with middle schools? If so, where? And how can students prepare for a career in aquaculture? I'll take that. I do work with middle schools um, everywhere in New York City <laughs> throughout the five boroughs. Um, and pre-COVID, we used to have middle school students come to the farm and actually learn about the fish and learn about aquaponics and why aquaponics is important. We talk about environmentalism and we would also help build, help work with the students to build an aquaponics um, system in their classroom. Now we're doing it remotely. Um, and I think that the, the first step in um, a career is just to, you know, either go to a school that is providing aquaculture as part of the curriculum. If your school is not, 
maybe talk to your teacher and say you're interested in learning and seeing, you know, um, what can come of that. I think there's no reason why you cannot spearhead it if it's something that you're interested in and get some faculty um, on your side. Um, you can certainly reach out to me at any point if you want to um, spend some time on my farm and learn on my farm. I love having um, young people. And to answer the question before is how do we create more diversity? Um, I try to do that by being as open um, and having my farm space as open to as many people who are interested um, in learning and in meeting people where they are. Jason talked about fish food. I work with students who are like interested in like, you know, um, um, farming bugs and larva and things that we can use for food. So I try to use my space um, as a, a research lab and a, a place where students, young people of all ages and backgrounds can come and experience the farm and learn about aquaculture and learn about its impact and also develop their own personal interests and skills. Um, if I can just answer the Q and A question from a student point of view as to as what was the question? Um, okay, so I personally did not go to a middle school that offered any type of aquaculture or any marine sciences. So I found Harbor School on my own. So I would say the first thing you can do in getting into a career or preparing yourself for a career as a young student is a lot of research. I did a lot of research going into high school and just trying to figure out what I wanted to do, if this was actually something I wanted to invest my time in. And um, how can us as students prepare for aqu a career in aquaculture? A good way to start off your career is by volunteering wherever you can. Um, as a young person who is about to start her long-term career in aquaculture, I found that my volunteer experience really helped me and made me helped me to guide myself towards the career path. So volunteer wherever you can. I know Brooklyn Bridge Park works with students. Um, pretty sure they have more information on their website about that. Would anyone else like to add on? Yeah, um, I just wanna add that, like in my case, I, I did not work in aquaculture in school or bachelor's or in high school or middle school. Um, but, you know, I had skills that could be used in aquaculture and, and uh, working in aquaculture allowed me to apply those skills in working on something that I was passionate about and that I enjoyed. Um, I think we need to increase the, there's a lot of diversity of jobs in aquaculture, and I think most people don't know about them. And I think we need to have better exposure to like Yemi does exposes you to what aquaculture can do is as one example but once you know that example it just opens a whole array of other options that you may have um, so and it requires a lot of different skills so not everybody has to look like be a pathologist like I am there's many other skills that are needed to help aquaculture and to help farming so everybody can contribute to the field if they like it. And I wanna give an example, like Rene would mention writing and education and communication, environmental communication is one example that is not the what you originally will think about aquaculture, but it's a career that applies to aquaculture. And it's, you know, it has, it has great uh, opportunities for, for promoting yourself if you have good writing skills and also help seafood and aquaculture and sustainability and conservation. Thank you. Would anyone else like to add on? Okay, then continuing um, also for all of the panelists, with respect to aquaculture, what are the most critical changes that we must make to face the future effectively? That's a big question. <laughs> um, so one of the things I can tell you from my experience from other parts of the world is that United States has very little aquaculture. 
And uh, so we need to uh, change our perception about aquaculture and create an environment in the US that allows those businesses to grow so we can have more fish that is locally produced and produced in the US uh, and more people dedicated to those businesses. Um, I know that one of the reasons aquaculture is not more is not done more in the US as compared to other countries is that we don't have a tradition necessarily in all parts of the US of eating seafood um, or cooking, knowing how to cook seafood um, or buy it. Or So we go to a restaurant and we have it there, but we don't necessarily do it at home. So I think we need to change in the US our perception about seafood and make it more of a staple that is accessible to everybody and can be used by everybody and is healthy and has a lot of benefits. So I think one, that's one step is that public perception about aquaculture. I think it needs to, sh to shift. And I think we all have a big role about educating people about the potential of aquaculture to sustain you know, our seafood production. Um, I'm going to add to that because that is, the, that is my vision. <laughs> Um, and also to say that we also have to create awareness around what sustainable aquaculture looks like, because um, that's really important. We're living in a world of climate change right now. Um, we have to think about what sustainability looks like and how to reduce waste. Um, and these are some, these are relevant conversations to have right now. Um, you know, what does it mean to raise more fish if you're dependent on ocean fish, right? What are some of the solutions to that? Um, there's a lot of waste involved in terms of, you know, with water use. Um, what are the solutions to that? Aquaponics is a solution. Is that available to everyone? You know, why would it or not be available? I think the, the we cannot talk about feeding people without also talking about some of the environmental issues um, uh, related to feeding people and also come up with solutions and then also help you know, create industries that support those solutions. So I'm looking at it from a very optimistic perspective, but first we have to address um, some of the challenges involved and then look at um, opportunities that exist to um, solve some of those challenges. And I should say that aquaculture is growing. It's one of the businesses that is growing in the US. There's a lot of potential there is for growth just because we are starting from you know, a relatively low level compared to other industries. I'm gonna jump in. Uh there are a lot of ninth graders on the call at New York Harbor School students, uh, sorry, students from New York Harbor School. And uh, when we cycle through the CT programs, a lot of times you will hear from me that we have to take the pressure off wild fisheries. So we have to do more aquaculture to preserve our ocean ecosystems. Also, I know that uh, this is unpopular to say because I love seafood, but we need to move away from less meat if we're going to really have an impact on climate change and aquaponics, I know that Yemi is experimenting because I've been to a farm. Uh, she's experimented with using ornamental fish, not just food that fish that we eat to grow healthy vegetables. And that's a really important local food source. I'm not saying we shouldn't eat fish, but we do need to take the pressure off conventional farming and big fisheries in order to move towards sustainability. Um, and for our final question, before we move into the Q&A section, what is one piece of practical advice you can give to students interested in going into this field? I think it came up already. Volunteer. <laughs> Get some experience. Do some research. Find a place um, that you can volunteer. Um, so that you can, you know, explore what your particular interests are and even if it's a, um, a path you want to take. Also get to know your skills. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I I'm was going to ask questions. Oh. <laughs> sorry. It's all right. Can both of you repeat what you were saying one at a time? I'm sorry, yeah. I didn't you, catch You can that. go first. So um, what I like to say is, I like to say you could ask questions. Asking questions is the best way to like figure out if you really like, like, because when, when I was in high school, I liked to ask questions to Roy all the time. Every single class, I'd ask like 20, 30 questions. And that's how I figured out that I really had a passion and love for aquaculture. And then just in life, it's really good to ask questions. Marta, did you have something to say that got interfered with his response? Oh yeah, I just, um, Antoine gave a great advice, but um, get to know what you're good at and how you can apply it to do what you like to do, you know, what, what you're passionate about. I think I've said it a lot of times, so I don't think I need to <laughs> repeat it. All righty, thank you. As a teacher, I just want to jump in and say, um, from I've learned from my students, I, I have a biology background and I love science, and that led me to aquaculture uh, for marine science and for, for growing food. Uh, but what I've learned from my students is that you can, and Renee wants to explore writing. Jason is, if you don't mind, Jason, talking a little bit about the students that want to study business in our program, which is a new flare up that I was not expecting. Uh, and, you know, there are many pathways, and, uh, you know, you should definitely explore all of it and, and see how that can lead to a, you know, a more sustainable food system. Thank you for all of your responses. That was a great discussion. Um, we're gonna continue on with the question and answer from the audience. We have a few questions already ready, so I'm going to start reading them. Um, first question, do you raise more than just fish? I'll go with that one. Yes, I also <laughs> raise, um, along with my fish, because I'm doing aquaponics, I do flowers, I do vegetables, I do herbs um, and fruits. All right, thank you. Um, and would anyone like to add on? At Harbor School, uh, in addition to the oysters that people talk a lot about, our main focus of supporting the Billion Oyster Project is actually working with microalgae. Um, and in addition to that, we experiment with fin fish and some invertebrates. Uh, but microalgae is one of the more challenging ones. And I saw in the chat, somebody had mentioned another aquaculture field is, is creating sustainable biofuels. Uh, which is something we study in aquaculture in addition to restoration and food systems. And Marta, if you don't mind me calling you out, I'm curious if uh, you guys are raising tuna. I read an article at URI. Is that a true? Is that true? That is true. We have a huge system. It's a big swimming pool uh, in which we have uh, um, blue and yellowfin. Uh, we have uh, mahi mahi. Um, so we. One of our researchers here at the university takes tuna from the wild and is trying to, they spawn really well in the system um, once they get acclimated to it. But the hard part of the tuna aquaculture is closing the cycle, is raising the larvae that come from the big fish spawning to the juvenile stage. So the first stages are really hard to culture. And he's doing research on what kind of diets they need to be able to get them and what kind of conditions you can have in aquaculture to get them from the larvae all the way to the big tunas that you know about. And that would be a great, you know, if the, whenever they get that work in, um, they've done it in Japan and in Australia for some species, and that will really release the pressure we have on the big tunas populations, which are really endangered in, in many parts of the world. And we also raise corals. And then Roger Williams University close to here is raising seahorses and other tropical fish. So it, it can go to aquariums. So you don't have to rely on catching them in the wild to, to place them in, in pet stores and in aquariums. That's, those are some examples, but there's many different. Me, you know, I gotta give you a statistic. 
while in agriculture, you know, in animal agriculture, we raise like general is mostly four different species, you know, poultry, you know, your turkeys, your chicken, your pork, your beef. In aquaculture, there's more than 200 species, more than 200 species that are being cultured for in aquatic systems. And that's just a very, very, very conservative estimate. Thank you for sharing. Um, this next question is, what is the most interesting plant or animal you've raised or found in the wild? I can probably say something about that. So I believe um, senior year in voice, in voice class, I actually, me and my friend, I think he like accidentally caught a seahorse and we kept it in the lab and took care of it and it was doing just fine. And it was amazing, it was really cute. <laughs> that was really exciting. Would anybody else like to share? There's this shrimp that you can get from the bottom of Narragansett Bay here in Rhode Island, but it's also in New York that has the punching, has a claw that can punch and it can break the, the glass of the aquaria. It's so far, and this is a tiny shrimp, but it's just like has this punch in the cloth that can break glass. Um, next question. If you were not working in or studying aquaculture, what would be your plan B? Um, I know the professionals probably want to answer this, but um, my plan B is actually journalism because I really enjoy writing. So if I wasn't doing environmental journalism, I would probably be just doing regular journalism. Um, uh, so uh, I was thinking maybe business and actually me, uh, some of our classmates in aquaculture actually thought of, of ways we can incorporate business to aquaculture. And some of us came up with how um, maybe creating aquaponics designs, like what Yemi is kind of doing. Would anybody I else? For all you guys uh, as my plan B. Avery, are you going to be a captain? Uh, can I work on your boat? Of course, of course. Um, I'm, oh, okay, sorry. I was just reading the questions and I got confused. So this one is, are there any career opportunities or options right out of uh, high school and what are they? I'm gonna jump in. Uh just because I think it's my job to make sure that happens as a CTE teacher. Uh, um, there are, the, there is a lot of equipment that goes into aquaculture that requires design, maintenance, uh, and selling. Uh, and there are plenty of jobs uh, in, in the city, you know, working with pumps and plumbing. Uh, and then we do some plumbing in our program, but also, uh, if you're ready to get out of the city, there's, there are uh, in New York state trout hatcheries that are really stable and great jobs. Not all the jobs at those hatcheries require a degree. And uh, we have connections with like lots of oyster farms. So whoever's ready to get on an oyster farm, let us know. There is a question directed for Antoine in the um, Q and A. It says, I work the um, I work the tenth grade this year who are in the Zoom. What encouraging advice can you share with them? Hmm. Okay. For so for me in college, I was really nervous to like. So I'm in Maine. So I left the city and I went really far. But what I can say to you is like, it's a lot of fun going to college and doing. Because so in, in college, I didn't start out as an aquaculture minor and becoming an aquaculture minor, I was able to work in the lab and it's just a lot of fun working in a lab and 
it doesn't feel like you're even though you're getting credit for school and credit for like to graduate it does not feel like you're like doing a classwork it feels like you're just working with fish and working with the things you love so i really suggest like you trying to get into a lab and try and do like hands-on work because it there comes to like there's gonna be your days where you're just like oh i don't want to do this but the majority of the time you're just gonna have so much fun and especially with a teacher like roy who like, like he, he just has a lot of fun with this class like i really suggest like you get into a lab as soon as possible I know it was directed towards Anton, but would anyone like to add on? Okay, then. Okay. Oh, never mind, Renee. Would you like to go? I, my my opinion was actually differing from Anton's. Antoine, sorry, and I don't want anyone to think I'm invalidating his opinion. But um, a piece of advice I can give is that a lot of kids. Well, when I came into aquaculture, I really thought that I'd be playing with fish for 45 minutes, but it's more than just playing with fish. There's a lot of science behind it that you need to understand before you can actually get to the fun stuff. With, so I would say also getting to understand the science behind aquaculture is really big in addition to playing with the fish. Thank you. Um, what was the most challenging task during this field? I guess this can go for whoever wants to answer. I don't know. <laughs> There's so <laughs> oh, depends on what level you are. Um, you know, I am good at science. For me, it's communication, but <laughs> so, you know, I can let, I think that that's something that you can answer personally. Yeah, like um, Marta said, I think it varies with people, but for me, it was definitely chemistry. So chemistry in high school, chemistry in college, it has been a struggle, but it's just about being determined and knowing your end results. Like you wanna do something, you have to get through this first and then you'll be able to do what you actually wanna do and focus on. And the chemistry gets easier when you start applying it to, you know, was to something that makes sense instead of just taking the chemistry course, which is sometimes Hard, you know, I know when you get to college and you have to get chemistry 101, it just gets to be really rough. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Once you start like incorporating like your skills into something you actually love and want to do, it becomes much easier to do. Um, I'm going to speak as someone with zero science background. Uh, <laughs> who also raises fish. I think the, the challenge for me was just learning to raise aquatic animals. Like I don't, it was not something I, I knew about. It wasn't even something that I planned to do. You guys are getting a, a head start. Um, I didn't start until my thirties. Um, and it was the, the, the challenge of learning about fish and learning how they grow, being able to, you know, spot when something's wrong, basic water chemistry, you know, I use the water tests and I could figure that out. Um, and then I had to really start leaning on observation, um, spending a lot of time observation, um, taking detailed records and making observation part of my daily tasks. Um, and then whenever I noticed something that was odd or out of place, I would research it thoroughly. Sometimes I figured it out um, quickly enough. <laughs> and other times I, you know, would just desperately email people for help. But uh, just to say for those of you who are not necessarily as science inclined, um, it can be challenging, but it is very doable. If you're just committed and you take good records and you're really good um, with observation, like your fish will also teach you. Like I consider them my teachers and they teach me um, what they need and I make sure that I am attentive and responsive. Yeah, I totally agree. I, I have many, I've worked with many farmers that don't have a college education. They come from high school and they have their own farm or they are employed at the farm. 
and they bring me the best ideas that I had for research because they are there with the oysters or with the flounders and they observe and and or fishermen, you know, they are telling me about how changes in climate change are affecting lobster populations. And they are the first ones that saw the disease in lobsters and brought it to us. So um, you don't need to have a college education to do well on aquaculture. You just have to like it and have good observation powers like Yemi says. Thank you. Uh, we're gonna wrap up the Q&A section with this last question. Throughout your career, have you ever faced problems in your experiments? And if so, how did you overcome it? All the time. You know, I, I tell students that they, they can, they are scientists when, you know, you can do 500 experiments and all fail and you, and you are all depressed. And then the time that it works, once it works, you forget about the 500 times that it didn't work. That's a scientist to me. That's it. Patience. Would anyone else like to add on? Um, all the time as well. Uh, I'll give you an example. At one point, I got really excited to raise um, crawfish along with my goldfish and koi. And I had done all this research about how to raise them, how to feed them but I added them in the same tank <laughs> with, the, with the goldfish and koi. Guess what happened? The goldfish and koi ate them all. <laughs> so I had done everything but think about the fact that it did not make sense to put them with the fish because it was like filet mignon for them. Um, so yeah, sometimes, you know, mistakes happen and then I learned, you know, and I'm gonna do it again, but this time separate them, so, you know. Just making mistakes is just part of the process. Thank you. Um, as we start to wrap things up, I would like to thank everybody for giving us your time today. Um, it was an amazing discussion. Thank you for having me included. Um, I will now pass the mic on to Lavina. Yes, thank you, Avery. And thank you panelists once again for participating in this wonderful panel. Thank you to the audience for joining us. Um, please join us in March for our next panel discussion with marine systems technology and ocean engineering. And please take part in the National Science Foundation survey. Stay safe and be well, everyone. Thank you.